Right, now it's time for us to jive with a jet. And joining us this week is an integral part of an incredible part of this Jets team, the defence. He was drafted in in 2021 and plays at cornerback, and he's played every single game so far this season. Hey, Mr. Carter, how are we? Uh, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Appreciate you having me, appreciate you having me. Of course, Michael Carter II, of course not to be confused with Michael Carter, the running back. How is that playing on the same team as someone with exactly the same name as you? Uh, it's cool now, I mean, we've, we've you know, we kind of settled settled everything down uh as far as the the name and stuff we don't get uh too confused uh too often um people we usually know who's talking to who um but it, there are a lot of mics and michaels just in the building on the team in the facility and stuff so uh yeah it's interesting but you know it works out Popular name in the facility for sure here. Yeah. Also popular theme is the way you guys have been playing, certainly on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, we know all about the talent that's on that side. And the other thing that, you know, stands out to me is a, a lot of you guys are all homegrown. You were all drafted by the organization. Does that make it even more fulfilling when you're playing as well as you are that you guys all came up through this together pretty much? Yeah, that's that, uh, that definitely means a lot because uh, when we came in, um, you know, when Salah got here last year and all that stuff, he was – he, you know, he told us from the get-go, he's like, we're going to be the the group uh, to, to flip things around here. Um, and so, you know, now that we're seeing, you know, a little bit of that success, um, it's awesome that we've been uh, a part of it, honestly. Um, and, and so just trying to keep it going and, and get, get to where we're trying to go. This is Michael. I don't want to bring the mood down in any way, but we need to touch on that Pats result from uh, the last time you guys played. Three all until the last five seconds. It must be gutting considering you played so well. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, in that game, um, you know, we did a lot of things well and, and also um, a lot of things to, that we can improve on. Uh, just speaking from the, the defensive side of things. Um, and, and we left, you know, some plays and some some inches out there that uh, definitely could have flipped the game, and you know, the the end result wouldn't even have, whatever happened, um, you know, wouldn't even have come to that point. Um, so, you know, there's always more we can do. And it, it, it's kind of been a 180 though from last year to this year, right? I mean, you're only in your second le uh, second year in the league, but here you are, ten games into the season, around Thanksgiving time you're in a playoff race. You know, there's meaningful games the rest of the season. Did you think when you came in that everything would come together as fast as it has here with this club? Yeah, because I feel like, um, you know, we're all young and, and nobody really um, was around, I guess, when or even knew or had much knowledge of how the Jets have performed um, in the past and the, the expectations. Um, we kind of just put our own expectations out there that this is what we're going to be. Um, we're going to, you know, make this thing work. We're going to be successful. Um, and everybody bought into that and believed in that and believed in uh, Sala and, and then all the, all the staff that he brought in to help us achieve that goal. Um, and so, yeah, like 100% of as soon as I got here, I felt like, you know, we, we could have did it. We can do it whenever. Um, so, the fact that it's happened in, in my second year um, is definitely expected. Michael, what do you think has been driving your success, particularly in the Jets' defense? Are you speaking like me personally, like just me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I think just I put a lot of time into, you know, how I prepare uh, each and every week, um, and and that helps me, you know, be efficient communicating. Uh, when when things start moving, um, that helps me kind of just diagnose and be able to anticipate uh, things that I see on the field. Uh, so I I think that's that's definitely helped me take another step in my game. And then I think also just having uh, DJ and Sauce on the outside and in the same room, just bouncing ideas off of each other um, and seeing the way they perform, you know, week in and week out, how they go about that process. Um, it's only, you know, we're only pushing each other and trying to, you know, match each other's success, honestly. Um, you know, when a guy makes a play, you know, we want to be the next one to make a play. So I feel like 
uh, you know, that's part of it. Just the people that coaches have put around around me, um, and then just my own preparation and, and the time I put into the, you know, being good at my craft. You mentioned DJ and Sauce. Like you guys, I think as a trio, have been as good as any cornerback trio in the National Football League this year. Do you, is there kind of like a little friendly competition between you guys? Like you said, you all try to make each other better, but do you all just want to set that standard as high as possible because that has become the standard with you guys out there? Yeah, I think um, friendly competition, not necessarily in the sense that, um, you know, we're just trying to, like, outdo each other and everything, but we're just trying to, to match each other's level of, like, competitiveness uh the production uh you know the impact we can make on a game and just that that type of stuff i think is is um you know what i'm trying to get at when i when i say you know we're just trying to trying to match each other in that sense tell us a little bit more about source gardner because especially as a rookie he's definitely left his mark on the nfl this season and the new york jets as well what's he like on the field compared to off the field uh on the field uh he's going to talk uh, and all the field he's gonna talk to, um, but he's a con- you know a true competitor man. Like he's, I would say, you know a, a top level competitor uh, when he's on that field. Um, and, you know he wears number one for a reason. He believes like you know he's number one, and he plays like it. And you know, that's awesome to see. You know, you know every snap you know you're gonna get his best, um, and so you know you gotta give your best because that's what. He deserves, you know, because he's giving you his all as well. So, you know, you're only in your second year. You know, you're a young player, mm-hmm. but you were thrown into the fire like right off the bat. I mean, you were pretty much starting from day one. When you look back on the guy who began his pro career a year and a half ago to the guy that's sitting here right now, where do you think you've made the biggest strides? Uh, I would say just just in my confidence, um, just the way I just go out there and just just shoot my gun. Um, and just expect to make plays now and just I play I play to, to you know just make the plays and just do my job to the best of my ability instead of you know just kind of playing and not be the one that makes a mistake um, and so that's gifted me you know turnovers and ball production and stuff and, and all that stuff too um, I think also uh, the way I communicate uh, on the field um, it, it helps me, but also helps the guys around me um, because I know, you know, if I see something and say something, uh, you know, even if it doesn't happen, you know, it gives me a sense of comfort on the field that, you know, I feel like I know what's going, what's going on so I can just play fast and, and, and do my job. Michael, uh, let's take things back to basics a little bit, especially for our UK audience and talk about your job, as you say, in the cornerback position. What skills do you need? What separates you from other positions uh, on the field as well? Uh, I think nickel's a little uh, it's, it's different because you you're kind of like a corner safety linebacker all in a one. Uh, you gotta be able to to tackle um, and, and and you know fit run gaps in the box and all that stuff. Tackle on the edges as well on the perimeter, but you also gotta be able to cover. Um, you know, the best receivers in the game, um, you know, and in that slide, it's, it's a lot of field. Um, but, you know, you just trust the call, trust what the what the defense is, what we're doing as a defense, um, and, and just go out there and play. Um, you just have that confidence. I think that's, that's really a big part of the job. You just play with confidence and have fun. Um, but you definitely got to be able to – I would say you got to be able to tackle – well cover well and communicate well because a lot of the communication from the inside has to go through me to get to the outside and uh communication from behind has to come through me to get back to everybody else and stuff too so um you know it's a lot but i feel like i handle it pretty well you know i I would think as a corner your job primarily is going to go out there and cover opposing targets on any given play i i would think that the way those guys up front are doing damage this year and getting after the <coughs> opposing quarterback. That's got to make your job as a corner, you and the other corners, just a little bit easier given that they seem to be harassing the quarterback on almost every single play. 
Yeah, most definitely, and it, and and it goes hand to hand, uh, coverage and rush. Um, but yeah, our our D line is the best, um, and they definitely make our jobs easier because you know we're not running around for however long, ten seconds out there, and the quarterback's just running around all the time to throw the ball. Like, ball's got to come out, or you know he's gonna be on the ground. Uh, so you know, shout out to the D line for sure. They're they're e- everybody is a beast down there. No doubt, no doubt. Michael, you just mentioned uh, quarterbacks. Uh, I need to ask you this. I have to. Last year, you recorded your first ever NFL sack. Can you remind everyone listening who that sack was against? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. my first sack was uh, Tom Brady. So that was... Stop yeah, it! That was pretty good. Stop <laughs> that, it! That was pretty cool. <laughs> that, this guy is so humble. Listen, tell us how it, feel, how it felt at the time, what you were... What you were thinking going into it, that moment where you're like, yeah, this guy is mine. Talk us through it. Uh, yeah, I think just like when the call came in, um, just trying to mix it up, the look. So, you know, I wouldn't get picked up in protection. Uh, I think I did a good job of that, kind of showing out and then kind of creeping in late and then just came off the edge. And then, you know, you have that kind of internal clock in your head. Like, all right, you know, he's holding the ball a little too long. Like, I'm going to get there. Uh and so that's what happened. And then when I sacked him, you know, I just – I was – you know, I kind of realized, like, you know, I got my my first sack. But, you know, I didn't really set in until, like, after and I sat on the sideline. And, you know, we were just going through the – you know, all the, the reps we had because we had just got off the field. Um, and I was like, dang, you know, that was that was Tom Brady too. So that was <laughs> that was pretty cool. Mad. Yeah. I definitely Mad. wanted to make a play uh, when we played the Bucks. Pro- see, the, Did you- the problem with that, though, Richie, is like it, it, for your first, like your first anything, right? You always like to keep a keepsake or a memento or something. Like for your first interception, you could keep the ball. Like yeah. if you could put it on the trophy case. I yeah. got the football. It says Michael Carter's first ever interception. Your first sack, like you can't take anything from it. Like you can't take Tom Brady's like towel that he has <laughs> in his That's right. Listen, You can't do anything. You took yeah. his soul. You took his soul. His right. soul is yours. <laughs> Michael Carter took Tom Brady's soul on that field in January at MetLife Stadium last year. Yes, let it be said. Yeah, I think. Michael, did you have a celebration like lined up beforehand? You think, right, whenever it is, I get my first sack. I've got this celebration in my mind, ready to go. No, I didn't. It was it was just spur of the moment. Uh, it just popped in my head. I didn't really have nothing uh, going into it. So uh, even when I got the sack, like when I got up, it just I still didn't have nothing. I just did something on the top of my head. Now you did you uh, did you ask for his jersey afterwards? No, no, no. Fair. Do, have you done fair. that with that anybody yet? Have you done like the jersey exchange with anybody after the, any game yet this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a few jerseys. You know, when I get a little nice little spot, I put them up. Are they usually friends, like guys that you know and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know I got one of my Duke teammates, uh, Dion Jackson. Um, guy I trained with AJ Terrell got his jersey. Um, some guys I played against in college and stuff like that too. Um, so it's cool, like, especially like you playing against a lot of these guys and then, or even when you train with some of the guys and then you go out there and then you, you play a game and they're like the enemy. Yeah. Um, but afterwards it's like, it's all love and it's cool. Uh, you know, seeing all the, you know, everybody, you know, just doing what they love to do and everybody's achieving their dreams. Um. So yeah, what is um, what's your release from football when you're away from f- practice, the facility? How do you clear your mind? Like, what are some of the things you like to do away from the football field? Yeah, I just play video games. Yeah. Big video game guy. Yeah, video game. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, watch Game Go on, of Thrones. What, like, what are you playing at the moment? Uh, I'm playing Call of Duty at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Modern Warfare Two. Yeah, yeah. Good game. You guys got uh, Sauce was telling me like are you you play with him and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys I they, play with Sauce. they got uh, yeah. it's it's the corners, Richie. <laughs> they got like this whole competitive thing going on with the video games too. <laughs> Love that. Listen, uh, final question for you Michael. We got Thanksgiving coming up, of course, or we don't, you do. I we don't celebrate <laughs> it over here. Um Dan knows how much I obsess over food. I've never had a Thanksgiving meal, but I want to know what your dream Thanksgiving plate is. It's a good question. Uh, for me, it's an important one as well. Yeah, yeah. For me, uh, gotta have some some turkey on there. 
But but definitely like fried turkey, like not like baked turkey. Fried turkey is a thing here, Richie. By the yeah. way, people do that. The fried. T- I've never had it, but it's it's big. I can make a fried turkey. Sounds you can do it fried turkey. Yeah, I can do a fried turkey. You a white meat or dark meat guy? Both it don't matter. It See, I matter. think it does matter. Dark meat though is is, is dark meat's is better, pre- preferable. Yeah, me too. White meat is dry. But if you do it's it too dry. if you do it right, if you if you cook the that's if true. You fry right then and you know. Inject it right and all that stuff. Then but what's sure. the what's the one like? Uh, look, Thanksgiving. There's a million things on the table. Mm-hmm. What's the one thing that has to be on your plate at some point throughout the day? Mac and cheese. <sighs> yeah, I forgot that, Richie. Mac by the way, cheese. when I was talking earlier. Yeah, you didn't mention that at all, DJ. Mac and cheese. You are yeah. misrepresented. Baked mac and cheese. Baked mac and cheese, man. Or like, uh, my mom makes sweet potato casserole. That's sweet potatoes. Uh, there goes. I don't know what that is, but it sounds amazing. Well, I need it's to get myself over there. Yeah. Or Michael, if you could um, yeah. post me some of your fried turkey, yeah. that'd be what great. About the des- what's the go-to dessert? <sighs> Gotta be just a red velvet cake, some ice cream. Red, ve- see a red velvet cake. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got it over here. Final, final question. I promise you, Michael. Any interested in the World Cup? USA are playing as we speak. You can say no. No, nah, not really, but but you know, you know how I'm rocking with it, man. You know, I'm a USA guy. So I don't think he's, no he's not rooting for, he ain't rooting for Wales, Richie. We know that. <laughs> We're not rooting yeah, for Wales. Fair. <laughs> fair. <laughs> Michael Carter the second, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Appreciate you for having me. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Yes, sir.